Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm KHOU11 meteorologist Pat Calvin here with a look at the tropics. Just a little bit of a tropical update. We do it here every night around 8 p.m. And there's not a lot going on, which is great news because things were active about a week ago. Things have really started to settle down now. We're still watching Tropical Storm Farinon. That's to the east of Bermuda. And then this tropical wave here just to the east of the Lesser Antilles with only a low probability of formation. First, the tropical storm. Again, a couple hundred miles to the east of Bermuda as of the 4 p.m. advisory. Winds sustained at 45 miles per hour. And it's moving to the north and northeast now at about 15 miles per hour. It'll stay on that track taking it out to sea as we get towards the beginning of the week. I would say by Wednesday, though, this thing totally falls apart. It's this tropical wave here, though, to the south that we have been keeping a closer eye on the last few days. The good news, though, is that development odds don't look quite as substantial as they did yesterday and a couple of days before. High pressure still over the Atlantic. That is going to steer this tropical wave into the Caribbean. And as we get in for a closer look, you can see this model tries to organize something, but as we get towards Tuesday, and Wednesday, it becomes more elongated again, so not a lot of organization. So the big question is, will this even develop? Uh, that's not even, you know, we're not even confident of that right now. Only a 30% chance of that happening. I will say, though, that some of the latest model data keeps this to the south. So even if something does form, uh, the big change from yesterday is that it looks like it's going to stay farther south. Let's take a look at some of the factors, though, that would go into this tropical wave developing. Again, this is the area that we're watching. So right now the wave is just to the east of the Lesser Antilles. It'll cross through the Windward Islands as we get into the overnight, and by tomorrow it's in this zone. So let's take a look at what's going on in that zone. You can see there is some Saharan dust still just to the north of this wave, and it's kind of following along the wave here on the northern edge. Whenever you have drier air close by to a weak wave or a weak system, it tends to kind of get ingested by that system, and it puts a limit on exactly how much growth we can see. We've also got a lot of easterly wind shear riding along the base of this area of high pressure. That's mainly to the north, but it is still impacting, again, the potential for organization with this wave. Wave. It's keeping that wave open. You notice you don't see any closed circulation on the wind streams there. So those are two things that are working against development for this wave. The one thing that is working in favor of development is just the water temperature. And water temperatures out there are well into the 80s. So as of 7 o'clock this evening, winds on this tropical wave at about 40 miles per hour. So tropical storm strength, the reason why it's still a wave is again, we don't see those wind barbs closed off into a circle. They're just kind of, they're wavy in motion. And so that's why it's still designated only as a tropical wave. Not looking super healthy either in terms of convection. Notice the clouds are starting to kind of shrink around that center. So it doesn't look as good as it, it did last night, which is good news. Our computer models, when we run them, they also have changed from last night. Notice about half of them actually cut off just to the south of Hispaniola. So half of the models don't even make it beyond Monday night and Tuesday with this system. And then the rest that actually do still keep something alive with this, mainly keep it again to the south. We don't have any more members veering to the north into the Gulf like we saw last night. So there have been a couple of changes. The models aren't quite as bullish as they were yesterday with development for the system, and that's great news. So as of right now, no imminent threat to land or the United States. Uh, which is great news. And as we keep going here into the upcoming week, we are getting closer and closer again to the peak of hurricane season, which is just three weeks away, September 10th. It's August 24th today. We're a couple weeks away from the peak of the season. And again, climatologically or historically speaking, we are now in the most active part of hurricane season where we see two thirds of all hurricane activity between now and the middle of October. So definitely keep your guard up. Even though this wave doesn't look as threatening as it did yesterday, still something to keep an eye on the next few days before we totally write it off. The good news, though, is that behind that wave, we don't have anything that we are watching across the Atlantic for now. But again, next few weeks, stay on your guard, stay on top of the forecast here as we get closer to the peak of hurricane season. We'll have another update on this forecast and, of course, your forecast for the upcoming week. Coming up on the KHOU 11 News at 10 o'clock, and we hope to